Today we're going to make fish cakes, um, homemade, simple recipe. There's other alternatives you can make. You can make Thai fish cakes. It's got some chili, a bit more of a kick to it. So really, it's whatever your preference. But today we're just going to make a standard fish cake. So to begin with, um, we're going to peel the potatoes. Move over to you. You don't have to be specific with the type of potato that you used. You can use sweet potatoes as well, and they are classed as one of your five a day. So, pack in the vegetables. Next, we're going to cut the potatoes. Um, we're going to cut them quite small because uh, this means they'll cook faster and they'll be easier to mash as well. Next, we're going to add the potatoes to the saucepan. We've already popped some water in the kettle to, to put on boil, and now that's boiled, we're just going to pour that in the saucepan until it's about three quarters full, or until the potatoes are completely covered with water. And we're just going to put that on quite a high heat to get the water boiling. So we're just going to let that boil for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we're just going to give them a poke and see if they've softened a bit. If not, we'll give them a few more moments. Next, we're going to chop the parsley and the spring onions, just very finely, because we don't want big chunks of it in the fish cake, but it's important to give some flavour. It's important we take the outer layer of the spring onions off, because it can be quite dry and may still have some of the soil on. So it's important to peel that off so it's nice and fresh. Parsley has 133 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams. I mean, obviously here we haven't got 100 grams, but try and pack some parsley into your diet because vitamin C is really good for preventing colds. And if you do end up having a cold, it can help to suppress the symptoms to hopefully make you feel a little bit better. We're just going to test the potatoes after about 10 minutes. And they're quite soft, but they're still quite hard in the middle. And we've checked that by just stabbing a knife through the middle and there's still a bit of resistance there, so we're just going to give it a few more moments until they're nice and soft all the way through. So next we're going to prepare the fish, and now a fish like cod is a white fish, and um, it's recommended that you should have, try and have at least two to three portions of fish per week in your diet. Um, as for oily fish, they recommend one portion, so this is a white fish would class as one portion one of your portions per week. So um, yeah, it's great, it's low fat, low calorie, and it's full of omega-3 fatty acids and lots of vitamins. So we're just gonna cut it up into tiny little pieces. So when the potato comes out and we've mashed it, we can kind of mix it in with the mashed potato, as well as the other herbs and vegetables. With fish in general, the government recommends you should have two to three portions per week. Today we've got a white fish, so and that would class as one portion, one of your portions for the week, which is great as fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids and lots of vitamins, as well as low in fat and low in calorie. So it's great to get it into your diet, maybe substitute it for meat as well. The potatoes have been cooking now for about 15 to 17 minutes and we're just going to take it off the heat, um, take it off the cooker and just drain the water from them in the sink, ready for mashing. We're just going to use a colander just to drain the water off, which makes it a lot easier so you don't burn yourself as well because the water is extremely hot. And now we're just going to take the potatoes and pour them into the bowl that's ready to let them cool for a little while before we add the fish and the rest of the ingredients to the mixture. Because we want to let them cool for about five to ten minutes, just so they're just about warm and not piping hot as they are now. So we're just going to mash the potato now to hopefully let it cool a little more and help the air get out. It's really important that we wait until the potato is really cool before we add the egg, else 
the hot potato will scramble the egg and that's not what we want to happen because the egg will help bind everything together. You don't need to use any milk or butter for this because with the egg in there it's plenty of liquid to bind, bind everything together. So it, it's, it's good in a way because we're cutting out the milk and the butter and we've got a nice protein source of egg in there. Now the potato has cooled just a little, we're going to add the fish into the potato and then add the spring onion and the parsley to then give it a thorough mix. Now we're going to add the lime to the mixture and we only need half the juice of a lime so I'm just going to pass this over to Isabel. I'm going to cut it in half and just squeeze the lime juice into the mixture and then give that a good stir again. Some pips may come out so just have a quick look and try and fish them out if they have. The lime will also add a little bit of juice to the mixture so when the egg is added it will help to bind it together but also give it a nice sharp little flavour. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to add the egg to the mixture. Now the mixture is pretty much lukewarm, so not too hot, not too cold, so it shouldn't scramble. So now we're just going to mix the egg thoroughly into the mixture. It's good to get your hands involved um, just to make sure everything is evenly distributed into the mixture to make a good fish cake. So now we're going to divide the cakes into four and we're just going to pop them back onto the chopping board and coat them in flour ready to be shallow fried in the frying pan. As we've got a lot of mixture, we've separated it into six fish cakes because it will take um, a shorter time to cook. So now we're going to add the oil to the saucepan to get the oil heat in before we coat the fish cakes in the flour to add them to be shallow fried. It's really important that the oil gets to high enough temperature so when you add the fish cakes in, it sears them on one side and then you can flip them over and it will see the other side as well. So we're just going to put about three tablespoons, three large tablespoons of oil into the frying pan and put on a high heat. And whilst that's heating, we're going to coat the fish cakes in the flour. So we're just going to cover both sides with the flour and then pop them to one side until the oil is hot enough. So we're just going to coat four for now and leave the other two to one side because really you should probably need two per person. Okay, so now we're just going to see if the oil is hot enough. And to do this, just going to pick the saucepan up and swill it to one side and see how runny the oil is. If the oil is really runny, then that means it's, it's got to a pretty high temperature. Yep, the oil has a consistency like water, so we're now going to pop the fish cakes into a pan two at a time so we don't overload the pan. We're just going to cook it for about 7 to 10 minutes on either side until it's golden brown and crispy.
Okay, so the fish cakes really need about three to four minutes on either side and just keep flipping them over so you can see what colour they are. If they're heading towards golden brown, then they're ready. We know the fish is ready now because it's been in the saucepan all together for about five to ten minutes. So that is enough time for the fish cake to be cooked all the way through. So we're just going to add some garnish to the plate. And as we've got the first two fish cakes cooked, we're just going to plate them up and have a little taste. There we go. So we're just going to get some lemon juice and give it a little squirt over the top just to give it a bit more flavour. And you can also, instead of salad, you can also serve it with vegetables if you wanted to. But with a fish cake, it's quite deceiving because you've got your protein and your carbohydrates all in one, so you don't really need any extra carbohydrates. Just some salad and vegetables and all finished. Okay, so here's our finished fish cakes. We've got two homemade fish cakes made with cod, potato, chives and parsley on a bed of rocket. <coughs> salad and lemon. Um, it's a great source of protein, carbohydrates, and you've got that nice bit of greenery in there as well. And yeah, enjoy. <laughs>